Hey everyone, welcome back to Motion UX. Ivan Wittaborg here, and today we're going to supercharge your UX motion workflow in After Effects with components. Let's dive in. So to start off, here we are in Figma. And in Figma, we have true components just like this. And we have this little symbol right up here. That means it's a component. That means if I go ahead and duplicate this, this is now an instance of this master component. So if I go ahead and I change the background color on this, it's going to change it on everything else. If I go ahead and duplicate this a few times, I can change the text to yes and change the text to no. And if I go ahead and change the color here, it will update everywhere else. So that's how components work inside of Figma. And components really help us to supercharge our workflow when we're just doing strictly uh, like UX, UI design, and just designing screens here in Figma. But we wanna have some of this same like supercharged workflow power when we're inside of After Effects as well. So let's dive into After Effects and see how we can do that. So here we are inside of After Effects and we already have this simple animation here uh, with this alert dialog box. Comes up, are you sure? Typically people aren't sure, I'm sure. Um, and that thing is just gonna pop up and go off. Okay, so really simple animation that we have here so far. Um, we just have this thing animating in. Uh, there's a slight opacity scrim in the background. This thing, alert background, just pops up. We have all of these things parented to this alert background. It's in, it holds for a little bit. We animate in on this, uh, the tap, it goes in, shrinks down a little bit, and then everything animates off at the same time. Not super complicated to build this, but say that we're trying to animate a flow that has like four different dialog boxes or a bunch of different taps. One way that we can handle that is we have this whole tap animation on one single layer. So we could just duplicate this, move it somewhere else, and we can reuse it. Uh, maybe we wanna move it around, but then we're running into some issues, right? We have to be very surgical and precise of when we're using the position keyframes, select them both, move them around. Um, it gets to be a little bit of a headache when we're doing a lot of these things and we're trying to move really, really fast to create a bunch of mocks or flows. So that's where the help of components comes into play. And in After Effects, we only have comps and pre-comps, which are essentially the same thing and essentially can function as components. So let's do that here now. So we have this tap uh, animation here. Let's go ahead and right click that. And all the way here at the bottom, which you can't see on my screen, it says pre-compose. So for pre-compose, we can just call this tap and we say, okay. You can see this composition takes up this entire timeline. It also, the layer bounds is the entire size of our master comp here. And if we go ahead and click inside of it, um, we can see that we have our animation in here. So the first thing we want to do is to basically crop this thing down so that it's not taking up the entire uh, master composition. It makes things really difficult to kind of click around and drag around uh, when it's taking up the whole space. So let's first see where this thing kind of starts. And we're going to use this wonderful tool called region of interest. We're just going to select this area right here. Make sure that we have kind of the start and the end. Doesn't need to be super precise. We just want to get the majority of the composition in here. Okay, we're gonna do that. Go to composition and crop comp to region of interest. And then now we have it working wonderfully here. If we go back to our master comp, we can see that it's shifted around a little bit. Not a huge deal. We're just gonna move that back down right there. Okay, and another thing that we wanna make sure is that this animation starts at zero. We're just gonna move this up here and now it starts at zero. And we also wanted to make sure that this thing ends when the animation ends. So if we hit N right there, we can move our work area in and we can trim the comp to that work area. And if we go back to our master comp, we can see it is working how we want it to work. The next thing that we wanna make sure is that we can easily line up when the tap happens here to when things are happening in our uh, composition. So a way that that could be helpful is if we actually go through here and right about here is where the tap is gonna happen. So like right when this thing kind of lifts up, and so we can hit the star button and that creates a little marker here and we can actually just name that tap. And let's go back to our master comp and we won't see anything right away. We actually have to update uh, the markers from the source. We right click it, go down to markers. We can update markers from source and you see now we have that little tap. And so now we know we just need to line that up with whenever our animations happen over here. So if we line that tap up right there, we play it back. Boom. So now, just like we had before on one layer, all the animation things are happening here. We can duplicate that thing, easily move it around, easily reposition it, and we know exactly when that tap animation is going to happen. So now we've created kind of this like tap component or pre-comp inside of After Effects to easily be able to just lay that down every single time. And just as a way to organize some things, you can just do this, make a folder, name it pre-comp, 
or you can name it components, whatever you're comfortable with and whatever the people that you're working with are also comfortable with. And so now it's right there ready to go. All right, so that was a pretty standard process of making a pre-comp that we can reuse again and again and again. Let's do the same thing for this alert because maybe we're actually gonna use this alert with different text and in different ways throughout a flow. And we wanna make sure that we're not duplicating our work every single time we need to do that. So let's go ahead and select all those layers. So we got the title, subtitle button, alert background, and we got the scrim in the background. So let's go ahead and select all those things. We'll right click it and go down to pre-compose and we'll name that alert and we'll hit okay. So all the same things are happening here that we kind of have to clean up a little bit. So if we tap into here, we have this whole master composition. So let's make sure we have it starting at zero and then let's reveal all the keyframes so that we can mark when does this animate in and when does it animate out. And so we're gonna go ahead and hit that star button for the in and the star button for the out. And so let's go ahead and label those. We're gonna label that in, we're gonna label that out. We can see it's not updated yet. Let's go ahead and do markers, update markers from source, and you see there's an in and there's an out. We also wanna make sure we trim the composition to only when it comes in and only when it leaves, just so it's a little bit cleaner in our master comp. So if we look here, we can see in and out. All right, and so let's make sure that we line these things up so that it starts to animate out when we also tap. So now if we play this back, comes in, out, perfect. So now we've got our tap and our alert as pre-comps that we're able to duplicate, move around, reuse as many times as we want, and we don't have to redo all of that work. But when we reuse, say, the alert, maybe we want the time in between when it animates in and when it animates out to be longer. Sometimes we want it to be shorter. And you can't do that with the composition as it is right now. So let's see how we might be able to make this composition even more powerful so that we don't have to do duplicative work. So if we go ahead and we click into this composition, you can see that we have our in marker and we have our out marker already. We wanna essentially make this pre-comp to say, hey, preserve the animation uh, that's happening while it's coming in, preserve the animation while it's going out, and then whatever's in the middle, I wanna be able to squash it together, extend it and stretch it to be longer to be able to fit my specific flows and needs. And there's a wonderful way to do that built into After Effects already. So if we go ahead and we double click our marker, we can select this protected region. So let's go ahead and click that hit OK, and you see that it actually split my marker into two parts that we're actually able to select a, a range of time with this marker. And right now it's going from here all the way over here, but we actually only need it to be right here. So let's go ahead and move this back. If we hold Shift, it'll snap into place. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with this one where we're gonna double click and protected region, OK. And if we go back to our master comp, we can see that we need to update the markers again. So let's go ahead and go to markers, update markers from source. So you can see when we updated it, the out protected region extends beyond the range of our comp. And that is because we didn't trim this. So if we go ahead and pull this back out, we can trim this to be super small. I'll bring it back over here and just stretch it to the end. And that should be what we need. So if we go back and let's update it again, markers, update, boom. And that is what we're looking for. Okay, so currently nothing has changed. It still animates in, still animates out. But let's say we want this to happen super quick. It just comes in, we immediately tap it, and it goes away. What we can actually do now is we can actually take the edge of our comp layer and we can stretch it to be longer and we can make it significantly shorter. And so what you'll see is that it will animate in and animate out just the same it did before, but this time in between actually gets stretched. And since there's nothing happening with the keyframes between this point and this point, you just see it stay still. So now with using the protective regions, we can actually stretch and shrink our pre-comp to fit our needs for any specific flow. And that makes this much more usable in the UX motion uh, workflow. So let's say that we have a flow that we need to mock up that's going to have this alert and then maybe a few seconds later, another alert with different text. We wanna be able to reuse all the work that we just did. Let's go ahead and duplicate these and go all the way over here. And we're gonna say the first one happens at around one second. Are you sure? I'm sure. And the next one pops up. Boom. Are you sure? I'm sure. Not super useful if we're just using the same exact text and same exact everything else. And so maybe is there a way that we can actually use that same composition, but swap some of the content inside of that composition uh, to make it a little bit more dynamic. And we can do that by using uh, some essential graphics properties. So let's go ahead and go into this alert pre-comp. And in here, you can see that each one of our text layers has a property called source text. And we're gonna use essential graphics as a way to make these properties a little bit more dynamic. So if we go ahead and click window, we can open up our essential graphics panel right here. 
And for me, it's gonna pop up right here on the right. And all I need to do is take this title and this source text, and I'm just going to select it and drag it right here, boom. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the subtext and the source text. Nothing happens immediately. And we can actually go ahead and close the essential properties panel because we won't need to use that again. But if we go back into our master composition, you can see that we have this new property here called essential properties. And let's go over to this second one and we can go ahead and flip those down. And you can see that now we have access to the title, the subtitle and the button text. And if we go ahead and right click this and hit edit value, we can actually edit what text shows up on here. Um, and we can say, are you really sure? With a bunch of question marks. And you can see that actually is changing right in our composition right here. If we scrub back to our previous one, you can see that that text is the same, but this one is now new. And if we actually click into the pre-comp, it's the same here. And so what's happening is that we're taking this, this composition and we're saying, we know this is a text layer, we know it's this long, we can actually swap that text out to be whatever we want. And that actually gives this composition this pre-comp more usability because now we're able to change the text, we can change the timing of when it comes in, when it comes out, all of those sorts of things to make this a lot more uh, dynamic, to make that pre-comp a lot more useful so we're doing less and less duplicative work. And so let's go ahead and change the subtitle. We'll say, you seem like you're sure, and yes. Let's say this one is actually a lot shorter. We wanna make sure that we align the tap with the out animation, and let's play it back. So it's gonna come up, are you sure? I'm sure. So with protective regions and essential properties, you're able to really expand the usability of your pre-comps and make them more dynamic and usable to supercharge your motion UX workflow. Thank you all for watching and catch you next time.